Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. So I found these paints online. They were $45.97 and they did have two day shipping, which is great. And when I saw them, they had 608 ratings, four and a half stars, and they were a number one best seller. So I was kind of intrigued. These came with 48 colors as well as this little watercolor paper pad. And it also came with some brush pens. So in the listing, they say this is amazing value. It's high quality and durable as well as portable. No leaks, no hassle. It is in this solid plastic case. As you can see, here are all of the colors. And here are also the little brush pens. There are two different brush tips. There's one that is a flat brush tip and one that is pointed. So the reason that I was really intrigued by this palette is what you can see right now. This palette is eight palettes in one. You basically get eight little individual palettes that hold six colors each. You can pop them all into this big palette, but you can also pull them all out, which means that you can customize each paint color in each palette you can create little like mini palettes for on the go or for when you're painting like you could literally put all the colors that you use for your skin tones in one palette what I did was I organized them by color because I thought for this video that would be most effective so I loved the pinks the pink was my favorite and I went ahead and made some swatches to see how this worked so this was on the watercolor paper that they gave me. It's acid free, cold press, 5.1 inches by 9.3 inches and 220 GSM. It did feel nice and soft. The texture was pretty and the watercolor went on pretty decently. But as you may have noticed, it was noticeably blue tinted, like noticeably tinted blue. So it was definitely a little bit harder to work on. So I switched to my own paper for the rest of the swatches, which is the Strathmore 500 cold press watercolor paper. So once I had all the swatches, I went through and labeled all of them with each individual color. And then I decided to reorganize the palettes the way that I wanted to. Like I said, I ended up organizing them all by color. So having all these swatches out here really helped me kind of figure out which order they were going to go in. And I just spent a little bit of time kind of organizing those. You can see all of the colors here. They are quite bright and vibrant. And I made some little individual swatch cards for each different palette once I had organized them. So you can now kind of see the way that I organized all of the different colors as well. I really enjoyed swatching these honestly and it made me really excited to work with them. But I had an idea and that idea involved Altoids. So get an Altoids can, eat an Altoid, and then empty the Altoids. <laughs> so one of these fits perfectly in here. I kind of thought two was going to fit, but they barely do. It's like it almost fits, but they don't. But you fit one in here. You can put the little sponge that came with the set, put in a little mini brush and a mini pencil, and you have a travel kit. You can use a hair tie to attach it to a small little notebook, and you are good to go on your way to your social distancing hike. You could also pop out the pans and replace them with your own paints. These are my Schmincke paints because they're standard size palettes. They fit great. So that's kind of my little uh, DIY for you. This is like a two in one kind of video. And before I go into kind of my review of these paints, I do want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is Skillshare. So thank you so much, Skillshare. Uh, you guys know that Skillshare is a really big supporter of my channel, and I really, really appreciate it. And what Skillshare is, if you are not familiar, is an online learning community, and it's for creatives, and millions can come together and learn stuff. Um, there's topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. My boyfriend is actually going to be signing up to check out some of the photography classes um it's really for anyone like if you are just like somebody that enjoys learning beginner pro whatever it's for everyone and they do have like all their lessons are a combination between a class project and video lessons um one that I specifically think is really interesting that I'm actually looking forward to taking is called modern watercolor techniques it's by Kat Coquelette um and she's actually a permanent creative nomad so she's living my dream traveling around the world and making art and 
in this class, she shows you how to blend non-traditional techniques to create a contemporary aesthetic. And I think that's really, really exciting. So if you are kind of bored and looking for some spontaneous acts of creativity to help maybe break up your routine, then this might be a great time for you to explore Skillshare. And like I said, members get access to so many classes. If you get a yearly subscription, it's less than $10 a month. So yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. If you click the link in the description box, the first thousand people are going to get a free two months to Skillshare. So that is a great way to check it out. Thanks again to Skillshare. And now let's talk about what I think about these paints. Okay, so as you can see, I have started working on the background. I did quite a bit of masking at the beginning of this so that I could really go to town on this kind of like wet and wet background without having to worry about it getting on any of my sketching or going over the edges. So I want to start by talking about kind of the paint quality. So one thing that I did have a hard time finding was whether this was artist or student quality. Um, there were some questions on like the reviews, but I couldn't really find a verified answer. So I did do a little bit of digging. Their website had the exact same stuff as the listing, which where it was like um, amazing value, real brush tip, high quality and durable, portable, satisfaction guarantee, like that kind of thing. Um, it said that their customers rave about the quality and value of their watercolor palettes they're crafted for ease of use and they're suitable for all skill levels um so there is a light fastness chart that i was able to find on the listing and this light fastness chart says that it is based on the blue wool rating system and at the bottom it has their light fastness rating definition so it says it's between fair very good and excellent so the chart itself is um, misspelled at the bottom. Very good has two R's in it, which is a li little bit like throws me off, but that's okay. Um, and it doesn't really have consistent parameters. So the poor is one star. Fair is two to three stars. Good is also three stars. And excellent is four to five stars. Um, like I said, they said this is based on the blue wool rating system. But uh, the blue wool rating system states that one is actually very poor, two and three are poor, four through five is fair, six is very good, and seven through eight are excellent. And very poor is designed as having a light fastness rating of less than two years, poor is between two and 15 years, and fair is between 15 and 50 and then everything else is above 50 years. So I'm honestly not sure as to the actual truth here, um, but I can assume that they would fall into maybe an average category of fair with a few being rated as poor. So fair is the one that was like between 15 and 50 years. So that part was a little confusing to me, but after kind of looking into that and my own kind of thoughts about this, which is that I do think that these are dye based. I couldn't again find any information about if these were pigment based or dye based, but based on using them and on my swatches, I do think these are dye based. So the difference between a dye based and a pigment based paint is a pigment based paint is going to actually sit on top of the paper. Um, it coats the object. A dye based paint penetrates the object and it stains. So that is kind of the difference. Now, because of that, because those pigments kind of coat the top of the paper, that's why we get granulation. Those pigments sink into the hollows of the watercolor paper, collect there, and we get that granulation effect. Because dyes stain the paper and absorb into the paper, you don't get that effect um, because they are staining. They are not sitting on top. You can get other awesome textural effects with dye based paints. So I can go into that later when I talk more about the technique that I used with these. Um, but you're not going to get the same granulation that you do. The other reason that I think these are dye based paints is based on some of the color selection. Dye based paints are very vibrant, they are very bright, they're very kind of clear clear and you are able to get some colors in them that you can't get with pigment based paints, most notably neons. So the colors, the way some of the colors are being very, very bright kind of makes me think these are dye based as well. So that's kind of what I think in terms of that. Like I said, that's not confirmed. I couldn't find any specific information, but based on those things, I do think taking into account that and the light fastness rating, I think these are more of a student quality paint than a artist or professional quality paint. So 
In terms of how the actual paint performed, I have a few different opinions and things that I want to talk about. So overall, I felt like these were really pretty to work with. They created some really beautiful effects and I was really able to get some very pretty colors. They were quite translucent. They didn't get muddy super easily. I was able to really layer up this background that had the clouds on it. And I did feel like overall they were pretty easy to work with. They do lift a little bit, but not too easily. This tends to be common, I've noticed, with dye-based paint. It doesn't necessarily lift as easily as pigment-based paint, but it did lift, and I was able to lift it um, to an extent which was uh, very useful. The colors also don't lose as much vibrancy when they dry down as some other paints that I've seen. And like I mentioned a little bit before, they are very vibrant. They are very translucent and there doesn't appear to be too much filler in these paints. Uh, that's based on them not being super chalky and not going very muddy when you build them up. So while I mentioned that granulation isn't something that's happening with these paints, you can create some really nice blooms and textures with them simply by dropping paint into paint or water into the paint to kind of push the paint out away from the water and dilute the water in the center area of the paint. And that way you're able to get these really cool textures. You saw me do a lot of things like that towards the beginning. You can also spray it with a spray bottle. There's a lot of different ways to create textures that aren't granulation that create some really, really beautiful effects. And I tried to use a lot of those in here, especially in the background, because I think when you vary the texture in your watercolor paintings, you're really taking advantage of the medium of the unique things that the medium can do for you and you're going to create so much visual interest in there um, versus if your colors were all super super like perfect and even I think that might just be a personal opinion I love texture but I do really think it adds to the complexity and visual interest of a piece so I did like the color selection as well. I felt like it was a pretty solid color selection. I didn't find myself missing too much, but there were a couple things that I did find myself missing. I mostly missed a very dark sepia brown. There were two browns, but they were a little bit lighter. There was more of a reddish one and then more of a bit of an umber one. But I really wanted a dark sepia or a burnt umber. There was also a... Uh, quite a big selection of blues, but I felt like more of them leaned towards the cool side than the warm side. And I could have really done with a nice warmer ultramarine blue. We had some that were pretty close to that, but they did lean a little cooler than I thought they like that I wanted to. So there were a couple colors that I missed, but overall I felt like the color, se color, color selection, the color selection was uh, pretty well thought out and covers most of your bases. So because of this, I think this could be a really good option for a lot of people. I think it could be a great option for beginners, for younger artists. Um, if you're a student and you have to paint a lot, you're doing a lot of studies, you're doing a lot of kind of quicker work, um, schoolwork, I think it would be great for that. If you are a traveling artist, you work in a travel journal, uh, things like that, this could be really, really helpful because you could literally create like a mini palette for cityscapes a mini palette for landscapes a mini palette for skin tones like you know and then you just grab the palette that you need like okay this palette has some greens and some browns and some yellows in it so I'm going to take that when I go paint a tree kind of thing um so that may actually be how I reorganize these after this video now because I am planning on reorganizing these a little bit um and potentially replacing some of them with my own paints as well just because even though I did enjoy these paints I prefer overall to paint with pigment based paints um but I did enjoy working with these a lot because I suspect that these aren't pigment based and because I'm not sure that the light fastness is as good as it could be this may not be the best option for professional artists at least not for your finished work but it could work really really well for studies and for sketchbook work um, that's kind of where I really think these will shine even if you are a professional artist or somebody that usually uses more pigment based paint um, it's just really good for quick studies and sketchbook work and especially like outside I think it's going to be really really good for that so I'm I'm quite excited about that. Overall, I have pretty positive opinions on this. Um, I, I do think it's going to be a good paint. I, I don't think it replaces my number one beginner option, which is the Van Gogh paints. However, the Van Gogh paints, while they are beautiful, so, so good, they 
are affordable for beginners, but you do get a much smaller color selection for the price. So cost per pan per color is going to be significantly cheaper for this. So if you're looking for more of a color selection and you're not quite sure, um, this might be a better one for you to go with. Also, like I said, if those those removable pans appeal to you, because that was one of the primary primary one of the primary appeals for me about this was the fact that this is like eight palettes in one, and I thought that was really really cool. So I mean, even if you, I mean, it depends on how much you think it is affordable for a palette. But if you really wanted to spend forty five ninety seven, you could just buy this and literally remove the paints and put in your own paints if you liked the palette option that much. Um, so I don't know. I, I thought it was a really cool idea and that part was very effective. It was super easy to push them out like the little pans. And I'm pretty excited about it, to be completely honest. So I think that's pretty much it for my thoughts on the paints, but I do want to talk a little bit about technique and the picture that I'm working on. And yeah, so the picture that I'm working on, I am working on the Strathmore watercolor paper. I just have a little pad of this that I've been using a lot recently for these smaller pieces. I got it in my most recent palette full packs box and it's just great for doing quick little little things. I guess this wasn't quick. I actually spent a really really long time on this. So this piece uh, I've been really enjoying trying working more with these kind of like Art Nouveau inspired frames but combining them more with my own style and my own techniques not necessarily Art Nouveau. I, um, but I really enjoy the frames because it really helps me play with kind of this uh, push and pull between background and foreground and, and things like that. So I've been really enjoying that. So that was kind of where I started with this kind of keyhole frame design. And then I worked from there. I really have been enjoying this kind of like galaxy space vibe. Um, and I wanted to throw that in and have it kind of transition down into all of these clouds. Um, and then I just kind of went, you know, I went from there and started thinking about these different elements that I wanted to include. It ended up being this kind of like split in half eye, these planets behind her and this, this hand that's kind of like reaching up towards her. And for me, this piece was kind of, it's a little bit right now. Things are, are, things feel foggy and cloudy and it's hard. Things are, are definitely difficult, feel a little gloomy right now. Um, and I feel like I'm almost like reaching out for help and for assistance. Um, not in like a, a, a mental health, I'm sad kind of way, uh, but more in just like a, we're all going through stuff right now. And I'm just kind of trying to focus on the good and focus on the things that are better and focus on things that are bigger than me, like space. I don't know. I feel like I'm BSing like a, a school project right now, but there was some thought put into this. Okay, that's it. Okay, we're done. So let's talk about technique. So with these paints, I didn't do too much lifting because like I said, they didn't lift too much, but I've never tended to rely on that too much in my technique anyway. So something that I've been doing a lot recently that's changed, um, I used to do, I would lay out all my shadows in kind of a cool purple or blue tone beforehand. And then I would start layering over the top of that. But I've actually changed my method now. And I start by, you know, putting in those shadows. But then as I go, I start dropping in different colors. A lot of times, pure colors. I'm dropping in pure magenta, pure yellow, pure blue. And I'm allowing those colors to mix on the paper. And then I'm watering them down and lifting them up where they need to be watered and lifted and creating those highlights and things like that and then I dry that layer let that layer dry and then layer on top and I kind of do that for a few different layers the first few layers I'm going to keep really really soft I'm going to let them really bleed and be really messy because I'm really just kind of creating that undertone that that uh more of the colors that are in the face and while I am kind of defining the shading I'm less focused on that and more focused on get, getting this the skin tone and and skin tone I actually was talking about this in my most recent powerful packs video as well skin tone is made up of so many different colors it doesn't matter what skin tone you are painting there are so many different colors in there and I find that when you're painting skin it really does help to emphasize certain colors and add in all those different complexities it's going to make your skin 
skin look a lot more real than if it's just a few flat colors. One way that I do find helpful is if you can take your reference image and turn the saturation up like crazy, you can usually start to see the individual colors that are popping out, whether they're blue, green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, you can start to see that and that's going to allow you to incorporate those in your piece more easily and see those differences a little bit more. So once I have that kind of soft layer, I start going in with more defined layers, as you can see, and establishing where those harder edges are going to be. So I'll lay that down and then I take a brush that is damp. It's You don't want it wet. You want it clean and damp. So rinse it off, kind of dab it on your, your towel, and you're going to use that to blend into that hard line. So you don't want to start inside the shadow. You want to start on the outside and you're going to slightly wiggle your brush and feather it inwards. That's going to help it blend on the edges and not get too light in the center. So if you haven't watched my watercolor 101 videos, um, watercolor, if you put water, it will dilute the paint. So if you have areas of high water, they're going to be less pigmented. So you definitely want to make sure that when you're starting to paint, you start, you put the most water where you want the lightest color. Basically, if you put a bunch of water inside your shadow, your shadow is going to be light inside and you're going to be confused. So once I have those kind of bigger shadows built up, then I go in with all the really little details. So I'm going to use a really fine brush. I'm going to get some really, really kind of darker colors and I'm going to start defining a little bit more of where those nostrils are, where the under of the jaw is. I am not going for a fully realistic look here, so I'm okay with some so softer line art being incorporated. So that's totally fine with me, but I find that a good way to do that is to put in the line art with watercolor itself. So I did that with the lashes and all of that good stuff. I made the inside of her eyes yellow because I was really digging this like yellow, pink, purple vibe. And I thought it was like reflected the yellow and gold eyes in the bottom half because I kind of imagine like those are her eyes. So I want to add in some metallics on top of this. So I'm going to be using these Prestigify Shimmery Pearl watercolors. I've had these watercolors for a while and I really, really enjoy them. I enjoy having such a big color selection and they're super, super pigmented and they're really metallic. I had this really great hot pink, which was so perfect for this painting. And I was able to outline some of the planets with that hot pink. I also had this beautiful set of pearl watercolors, which were in all of these gorgeous pastel colors, including this absolutely beautiful pastel pink right at the front. And I knew that I had to use that. So I decided to use it to outline the main character because I didn't want to outline her in something like I wanted the outline to be able to contrast with the planets in the background. And since those already had some metallics, I decided it was best to keep it light. But I didn't want it to be silver because I thought that would contrast too much because, you know, there's a lot of gold and I didn't want it to be gold because, well, there's a lot of gold and that wouldn't contrast enough. So the light pink seemed like a good way to go. I also used this gorgeous coppery shimmery color to add in some highlights in her hair and I added in some highlights in the eyes and the nails with the gold highlights. So basically I went crazy with the metallic paint. Oh, I put it on the eyes too. Her eyelashes are metallic gold. I think I might have gone a little overboard with the metallic paints, but whatever. I'm a magpie in a human form, so it's fine. I'm happy. Um, so then I just finished the final details. I'm using a little bit of white gouache to add in some white highlights. I'm using a super, super tiny brush by Transon. I always use this brush for all my little highlights and for my line art, but I think I'm going to have to replace it soon because one of the little like brush hairs is finally starting to, you know, go rogue. So yeah, this is my finished piece. I am really excited. I really like this piece. So I hope that you guys like it too. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that it was helpful. Um, let me know if you've tried these paints. I would love to hear it. Both the original and prints of this are going to be up for sale in my Etsy as well as some other new work that I've done. So check that out if you're interested. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.